25 and the horror that is Aerostorm. Welcome back, everybody. Infamous NYC. Been a while. I've been busy. And I haven't really had much time. I haven't even had the chance to check out the patch. I've just been working. I think I've put in like 12 of the past 14 days. It's been really busy um, with work. Especially in light of what's going on, you know, across the country or across the globe, I should say. Uh, it's been really keeping me busy. And obviously, unfortunately, no time for the glory that is Horror Storm or Harrow Storm, <laughs> whatever we want to refer to it as. The uh, performance patches have been, uh, from what I hear, not so great. And so, of course, you have iCaliban come in $15 a month sub, $50 a year for a chapter, crown crates, limited time houses. With all those revenue streams, how is it that this game's performance has continued to degrade month after month for this long? This is you have failed Zoss. And I say no. I say no to that. Zoss hasn't failed. If anything, Zoss has actually been quite successful at keeping you, the customer, playing their game despite the bad performance. And I've said it in my previous videos, you know, that especially the majority of people today that play video games, even though there is a growing population of females, like the growing vast majority of the people who play, you know, online video games, especially MMOs, shooters, competitive games, etc., are typically men. And men have a hard time Letting go. People are like, well, what am I going to move on to? What, where, where am I going to go? Like, what video game am I going to run to? ESO, you know, has great PvP. And it's like, well, you just crashed five times in the past five hours. How's that PvP going? And the reality is, is that maybe there's nothing. Maybe you hit the gym more, right? Maybe you work a little more. Maybe you find another hobby. Maybe you find another hobby. You find something else to do. Maybe you get a little bit busier with work. Maybe instead you do some overtime wherever you're at. Um, maybe you focus on your investing. Maybe you focus on your physique and hitting the gym a little bit a little bit harder than you normally would. Maybe you go out there and you find a pump and dump, or maybe you find uh, something else to occupy your time with. It doesn't necessarily mean that there always has to be you know the next game or the next MMO. It's like maybe you go back to something of old that actually functions, right? I mean, that's just the reality of it. The reality is, is that the state of the game is not a reflection of the developers or even of the, uh, of the management. It is a reflection of the people. And it's the same thing when it comes to who the people put in charge of the country, who, who the people elect. It is, you know, when you, when you have someone who is dysfunctional in a position of office, <clears throat> it is a reflection of the people who put such man in office. And it's the same thing when it comes to video games. There's a wide variety of video games um, that have come out this year. Like, for example, Anthem and Fallout 76 um, and, a, and a, a couple of other games that have released in broken states and have maintained their level of brokenness throughout their existence. ESO started off fairly well. And then looking back, it's like, I don't know, like we were we were good back in 1.5 or 1.6 and it's like 12 updates later and it's a shit show. It's like game performance is terrible and Zoss and the developers are repeatedly having to go back to the drawing board and it's like the whole, you know, penny wise, pound foolish where they have to go back instead of being able to work on the next content or and actually the sad part is this was the improvement path. This was the improvement patch where... They spent the past two patches, right? Two straight patches with performance improvements have both made the game considerably worse. And it just goes to show you that this is this is primarily the responsibility of the community. When we, the community, kind of downplay the sort of minor changes, like, for example, <clears throat> like I released in my previous videos, looking back at the paid, more of the pay-to-win aspect of what ESO was becoming with the release of Necromancer, with the release of Warden, uh, with the release of sets like New Moon Acolyte, like, for example, Jewelry Crafting, 
Um, even in I was watching Fangrish do like the new PVE dungeon, and in one of the PVE dungeons, you get like this little mini buff, <clears throat> and then it says when you get the mini buff, it's like, it's like if you're not a necromancer, you get like three percent or two percent, but if you were a necromancer, you'd get five. Right? It's those little subtle changes that get introduced to introduced into a video game and the community doesn't just say oh we need to stop that right there we need to nip that in the bud because the future will look grim and this happens all the time it's kind of like that you know that um illustration you know if you take a frog and you dump him in boiling water it immediately will jump right out but if you kind of let it simmer and then slowly bring the water to a boil then the frog the frog will eventually, you know, let himself get cooked. And that's exactly what happens within video game development within all of these different companies. They just kind of throw shit out there. They see how the community reacts. If the community doesn't overly react and immediately recognize what is happening is bad for the state of the video game. It may be good for business, at least in the short run, because they spend less money on development. They spend less money, you know, on fixes. They said spend less money on maintaining so that they, they can receive a greater ROI, a greater return on investment, at least in the short run. But in the long run, in the state of the game, they lose customers. They lose the trust of their customers. They lose the trust of their community, of their community. And then people say, I would never buy another game from X, Y, or Z company. And this is the this is the reality and it is the fault of the people. You need to stop blaming stop blaming the companies and take a real look in the mirror and recognize that the person who was at fault is you. And this primarily happens with men. Men have a hard time, you know, walking away from women who are bad for them. They have a hard time of walking away from jobs that are no good for them. And, they, and they, it's the same thing within the video game community. We kind of limit ourselves to what's readily available to us instead of saying, you know, let's band together and let's do our own. Or let's do our own thing. Right. Let's go our own way. And this is this is this is basically the result. What you what you have right now, what you're looking at in the forms of why the video game and in, gaming industry is the way it is. It's primarily as a result of you, the customer, as of you, the man who is not making the choice to say, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to pre-order. I'm going to wait till the game comes out. I'm going to check out my favorite YouTubers or my favorite streamers. I'm going to check in. I'm going to get their opinion. I'm going to look and see what the game looks like. And if it's, if it's good over the next couple of months, <clears throat> if it's good over the next couple of months, then I'll purchase it because it's worth my time. Instead, what happens is people jump right in. They pre-order. I mean, shit, look how many people pre-ordered and and put money towards um ashes of creation where is ashes of creation today look at all those people that were looking forward to um new world and that edgy finally bringing back old school hardcore um pvp with an mmo that immediately within within one one um within one um not even a patch within just like one testing of the game they were like they immediately you know a remove large portions of their pvp and what happens is people ended up pulling pulling back their money in certain instances like for example in australia um places like australia gaming companies are actually trying to stop um consumers who have pre-ordered from being able to receive refunds when um when those when those games don't come to fruition where the game comes out and it's broken and or where the game comes out and developers basically do 180 in places like in australia they, they've attempted to stop people from being able to get their money back and this will only continue to get worse until of course we as a gaming community say enough is enough and we're going to stop pre-ordering we're going to wait till the games fully come out fully fleshed either the game comes out fully fleshed fully working or we don't buy it's the same thing with um, with this patch instead of purchasing you know the update 25 or whatever it is for the new chapters i'm going to say i'm not going to purchase it i'm not going to pre-order it i'm going to wait till the patch comes out and then i'm going to wait and see if it's working if it's not working i'm not going to purchase it and this forces developer companies either the game goes belly up and then a new gaming company comes in and then fills fills the gap which is good because that creates competition when you keep when you keep games and when you keep game studios in this mediocre um in this mediocre sort of limbo where they just push out you know half-baked content um then you as the consumer are paying full price for what is in essence 
trash. Basically, it's this is the exact same thing right now. What we see, even in the dating world, where we see a lot of young women that are not looking, you know, for relationships, and then they ride the carousel, you know, till they're in their thirties. They okay, and they say, "Now I'm ready," and I'm, they're looking for, you know. As, you know, as they say in, in Red Pill societies, you know, they're looking for, you know, the wealthy guy, you know, super fit, good looking, you know, the, the top 20 percent, et cetera. And meanwhile, they're used goods. Right. I mean, this is something that I see, you know, in, in my dating life where I get a lot of young women basically basically played catch and release for a better part of years here living in Manhattan. And then a lot of these women are looking for long term relationships. And then foolishly, many men commit to these women. And this is the state of men. It is, it is not just in dating. It Having that attitude of you're willing to settle for less has an impact on the people that you associate with, the women that come into your life, the jobs that you're willing to take, you know, the, the games that you're willing to, to purchase, even when it comes to clothing, etc. It impacts you in every form of your life. And it's why our forefathers taught us to have high standards and to and to shoot for those high standards and not settle for low, mediocre um, returns for the investment. And so that's basically my advice. I haven't had the opportunity to play you. I probably won't. I'm a little busy playing uh, playing a little bit of Wilson lately. Um, when I have a chance, I haven't had much a chance to do anything because I'm literally just working nonstop. But because that's what my focus is, I'm focusing my attention on putting more money into the market. I'm paying a lot of attention to what's going on in the market, looking for for investments, things that I can invest in that I find will be an investment for the future, working on my dividend account. And these are things that you should already be doing as a young man. You should be focus, focusing on work, maybe working on a side hustle, hitting the gym as often as you can, making sure you're eating well, especially in light of what is going on across the globe with the coronavirus. This is not just um, an impact in video games. We're seeing it even within the hospitals where I see this even in the hospitals where people are settling for mediocre. They're not willing to to push themselves. It is a it is a global is a global epidemic of what is going on within men where the people are just basically kind of settling. They're not pushing themselves. They're not pushing themselves to achieve more. They're just basically settling for mediocre. And that impacts you in every in every way, shape, and form of your life. With that said, I hope that you guys are hang, hanging in there, you know, healthy. Make sure you practice, you know, good hand washing. Uh, if you have a cough, make sure you cough into your sleeve. Um, try to minimize the use of masks in unnecessary situations. And of course, if you come in contact with someone who, of course, is sick or has any sort of flu-like symptoms, try to maintain a distance of six feet away. And of course, tell that person as well to cover cover their cough or cover their sneeze, etc., to avoid contaminating things. And of course, if you're working at a station that is utilized by other people, make sure you wipe your state. Make sure you wipe that station down. For example, if you're a nurse working at a nurse's station, if you're a bank teller, you know, etc. If you work at a desk, make sure you wipe everything down, even including the chair. Uh, and of course, practice frequent hand hygiene before you come out, before you sit down and eat, before you touch anything. Practice keeping things as clean as possible. Hope hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care. Thanks for watching.